Welcome to Solutions Rising. I'm Rachel Branch, and I am truly delighted and honored to welcome a very special guest to Solutions Rising, Mr. Rauf Sonyaev. Mr. Sonyaev is an artist and an art teacher from Newton, Massachusetts, and has painted what I believe is, is, is an incredible fresco in the home of Floating Tower Artistry retreat right here in North Adams. We're going to take all of you there to be able to see this spectacular work of art and learn about its extraordinary creation. What a journey. Welcome, Rauf. We'll meet you there. Here we are at Floating Tower Artist Retreat and I am with Mr. Rauf Sonyaev and we are going to see his incredible art. And we're going to start walking up the stairs and he's going to describe his beautiful piece of art. Thank you so much. Here you go. I'm gonna hand this to you and we will I will follow you up the stairs. Thank you. Yes, uh, so starting up over here, uh, just to talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking about this in a kind of material focused way, right? So this is uh, paint blue over plaster uh, and, and these are prints on mulberry paper taken from Giotto's Angels with his fresco. Uh, so the, the color here is very significant because in many old New England houses uh, this this paint uh, would be associated with with keeping uh, evil away. So this is this is hate blue, yeah. And and it's a, a color that I found is very close to the color uh, in mosques in Uzbekistan. So I was very interested about that that connection. That's one of my favorite colors, and it might be why I like it. Keeping evil away. Yeah, it's a treasure. Now. Huh. That's all right. So, so these here, um, these are these are birds painted, uh, and actually these are the the owner's two birds that I painted wow. here, uh, and uh, Bruegel's House of Music was was something I was I was looking at when painting these, um, and I, actually a collaboration with Rubens, uh, very. Very interesting to me because uh, this is a house of music. There's a lot of composers yes. that yeah. go through here, so I like that tie-in. And and this is King Solomon's bird over here. So mo moving on with the Abrahamic religion theme I have going here. So that's actually oil over plaster. So. That's those are prints and these are these are paintings in oil over gesso over plaster. Um, how do all you new decide course. the medium that you're going to how, I should do this? How do you decide the medium that you're going to paint in? Well it 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 depends um, what the what the what the problem is, what the question is, well what I what I need it for. Oil is really amazing because it has a glow, and and that's really unique uh, because the way that oil works is it's a it's it's a film, so light will go through this oil film and bounce back, and and uh, that kind of glow, uh, I think, is is perfect uh, for walking up the stairs, right? Something below, and it's it's kind of feels. Illuminated. Feel, feel you feel like hopefully like like you're 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 going to see something exciting further on. It is the resiliency of oil. That's a, it's a very interesting question because uh, the part of the fabric of this house, part of part of what really makes it exciting is that it is an older house. This is an older property, and it's gone through so many changes and layers. And I'm thinking about that a lot. Um, and so I would say that the oil part of all of this is the second most resilient part. 
and I'm thinking about how things might come apart with time. And I think as 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 we go around, you'll see that 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 that's very much something I was thinking about. So that's a that's a really awesome okay. question. And uh, I think this house was built around 1870. That's right. George Chase. That's right. So it is definitely withstood the test of time with some loving care that just has happened in the last few years. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, absolutely. No, it's been a monumental effort, I think, on uh, Mati and Mikey's part mm -hmm. in in doing this, and and I hope I hope that this part of it is also adding to it. So. Um, this is the, this is the most resilient part. Um, oh yes, I think I should come over here and because this was the first time we came up here. Yeah. You told me this was a fresco, and I didn't know what that yeah. meant. And I think our viewing audience would love to know. Yeah. What, so. What that is. So um, this this part here is true fresco, um, as is as is all of this that we're about to move through. And um, I, was, I was very excited to work with this because I'd never worked with true fresco before. And what it is, is uh, pigment that is painted directly into lime and plaster. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of different materials involved. Uh, a lot of, lot of marble dust. Uh, but, but for me, this whole project really mostly was about figuring out this material for myself um, and and uh, frescoes because because it's just pigment applied into lime and plaster with water once the water evaporates out it becomes basically a solid rock so so this is uh, this should be the most resilient form of painting pretty much possible and that's very very exciting um, it's it's completely different from any any other paint. That glow that I was talking about uh, here here there's more of a shine. And I think you can kind of see that mm -hmm. in the the dried lime uh, with with the plaster that there's a, a sheen to it that you don't really get uh, with with other forms of painting. Um, I think we're going to be coming back to this area, right? Yes, we are. All right, so maybe moving through here. Of course, I'm short enough that I don't have to really bend down too much. <laughs> yeah, just below. So, so this is this is the um, the the lucky Atlantic cod. So, of course, of course, the fish. Oh, that's, that's a fish. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> when Dave comes around here, he'll be able to. Get, oh, that's a wonderful. It's a good New England fish. Ah, <laughs> yes, it's a great fish. Yeah. So, so you know, there's there's many different connotations. Uh, having to do with with fish uh, in 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 the old texts and and in in different uh, belief systems, but but also and, sure. Yeah, religiously, uh, but locally, there is also a belief that the sacred cod will will bring you great wealth. So um, I was thinking about that and putting it into fresco. Um, so just out of curiosity, sure. did you lay out? what you were going to do up here before you even started? I mean, did you know what each wall was going to be? Yeah, I had, I had, um, I had a general, a general sense, but, but, you know, this was, this was a project that unfolded over an, an eight month period and there was a lot of discussion and changing and pivoting. So, so while, while I had, um, a pretty clear plan, uh, the plan changed as the walls changed as the materials change, so it very much uh, grew, right? And and it it, it grew from from uh, a single point. Uh, there's a there's a, uh, an an area where I had made uh, the first batch of fresco essentially that worked that stood, wow. and from that point everything everything flowered really, and grew. How long did the actual painting take you? Actual painting. I mean, I I couldn't tell you in 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 hours, but but I was here for eight months, and the, that was that was the the main thing I was doing was doing fresco research and and uh, combining materials and um, and actually applying the paint. Absolutely. And right behind you is this beautiful. Is that a blue tulip? Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. The blue 
too a lot. Thank you. Uh, so uh, tulips, tulips are are um, a major symbol in uh, in Tatar art and and in, in in Islam art. And I thought it was interesting to you know do something where the prince uh, the Jado's prince downstairs. I'm kind of using uh, that figurative image making as pattern. And here I'm doing the opposite. I'm taking something out of a pattern and and kind of and, and doing a slow focus on it. So that's an interplay that I'm very curious about. It's so detailed. And of course you're going into a very fascinating corner that I yes. just told me a little bit about. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna get out of the way so Dave can yeah, so so this is this is an area where where I'm generally looking at at, at the the material closely, and uh, I'm playing a lot with the the idea of what is shown, what isn't shown. Um, but here, what is shown are witch marks, and and witch marks are something that uh, carpenters who would work on, on old houses in New England would put in and tie in to protect the house also from, from evil. So going along, I think, uh, very, very well with the blue. Uh, and, and you can see that there's a variety of marks. There's some down here as well. Uh, that that you kind of have to look for, and maybe even you have to touch the work to find some of them. So there are carvings in the. Yes, in exactly, the, in exactly. The wall, someplace in the house. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So usually they might be in wood, and they would be put in with 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 carpentry tools. Um, but I have them scratched out here, and then down here as well. Amazing. This is extraordinary. So now we're going to come out into another area of the attic, and we're going to continue this so impressive discussion and tour. Here you go, Ralph. I'm going to hand you the mic. Thank you. So this is now fresco seca, so it's, it's going to be uh, oil and acrylic over plaster. So this is in in oil, and actually this is on a wooden panel. Everything else is plaster, uh, but this is uh, El Greco's hand of the count, which uh, also I think is significant uh, with hands that are that are often shown in, in various imagery such as the Hamza hand. So thinking about this connection between uh, a Christian painter and, and uh, Jewish imagery. And they have an open hand? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the hand here and then I, I made it in fresco as well. I think they, maybe we'll get we'll there in a minute. We come back around. Yeah, yeah. So these are again all of these tulips repeated many, many, many times oh. um, with some false perspective. So hopefully the hallway stretches out as you walk through it. And the imagery here behind this window is actually taken mostly um, from a plate uh, that I, I, I got actually at a mosque in Uzbekistan uh, from from uh, a wonderful artist who talked me through it and and explained not only his process but also what he was thinking about as he made this plate and I thought it was so wonderful and such a such a great thing to kind of stretch out superimpose over or I guess even behind everything else is this is this patterned after an actual window or similar windows yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So very much looking at the the architecture that's present here and uh, also in the surrounding New England area, absolutely. 
So another window up here. We must have a little joyful giggle as I first saw this, I had to ask Rove, my goodness, this reminds me of Michelangelo. Did you, how did you paint this on the top without realizing there's quite a distinct difference in our height? <laughs> and he just had to reach up. So this is another beautiful, yeah. I love this. Which is probably, you know, a little tiring on your arm. <laughs> no, it's not, 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 so, not so tiring. Uh, it was actually very exciting to kind of pull this stratus across the whole way here. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's another famous fresco. The Sistine Chapel is also yes, yes. In, 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 in fresco. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's a very humbling comparison. <laughs> um, quite fitting, I think. Um, and of course, I had traveled in and out of every cathedral in our gallery with a woman from Williamstown. I Compton in 1960, and so I saw a lot of the, the art. I don't think I really knew that when I was seeing frescoes what it mm. was. And of course, you've enhanced that understanding of it. But yes, there are similarities. Yeah, similarities. It was, no, it's 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 a very interesting process, and you have to mull everything together, and uh, working with a lot of powders and liquids, it felt very much like uh, alchemy or something like oh. that, yeah. And I think, and here you, you can see, uh, uh, this is the area I was thinking about to your question about resiliency. Uh, so so the, the, there's areas here where you can see that there are these golden leaves that are going over paint that is peeling back layers, right? And, and this leaf is actually taken from a very special tree that's right outside. Uh, and that's, I, I believe it's called, um, it is a Japanese oak tree. Uh, and, and it has these beautiful, beautiful leaves that uh, I have patterned over everything else. So is this the oak tree? I must insert this. Is this the oak tree that Anna Sobolieva, and I hope I said it correctly, did her tree of life and connected it from uh, the Ukraine to uh, I think that's here, that very same oak, tree. Uh, Absolutely. And so we're all connected to this incredible artistic experience here. Yeah. Those trees' roots run far, yeah? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm also thinking about uh, contemporary forms, and uh, I think maybe the astute observer will see some uh, Albers forms coming in here. So trying, trying to tie everything meaning, to the present. The meaning of gold leaves is there a, a special yeah. meaning for gold leaves? Sure, sure. Uh, so this this combination of, of, of colors is very much traditional and uh, uh, and and this is actually this is actually a, a uh, holy combination of colors according according to, to certain belief systems and uh, uh, including including some of the Islamic readings that I was I was reading yeah. Uh, and and uh, you can see you can see that these leaves turn to real leaves at a certain point here. It seems uh, would it be appropriate to say it seems like you have combined universal, spiritual or religious meanings together. Sure, absolutely, to absolutely. Uh, and and I, he had some really commonality between all, among all of us yes yeah and I think I think that speaks very much to your statement with this show uh, and and what you're you're interested in in um, absolutely absolutely and and I think that it's also for me very important always what I'm speaking around mm -hmm. so so um, I am choosing I'm choosing very specific images and from, from many different universal uh, uh, belief groups, but I'm also very carefully emitting certain imagery. 
I think that's also important and also well, it, speaks it, to you. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, which I would suggest means that you're passing on love. Sure, absolutely. And, and hopes for peace. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, all those things that so many of us really want. I mean, yeah. if, yeah. If, if entering this space can make somebody feel like that, you know, then there's, that's, that's, that's the best. That's the goal. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm awed. I was awed the first time I saw it. Uh, it's magical. It's mystical. Uh, but also, um, the depth, because you're explaining it, is, is even more meaningful. And I think will be for our audience. I, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, so, so that point right up there, um, that kind of, I, I think of the square almost like the, the light coming out of the, the window near it, but initially uh, that, was, that was a failed experiment into the, the process of fresco. So when I did everything by the book, uh, that's what it ended up looking like, crumbling apart. And see, I'm, I am so glad that you left that, because for me, that looks like uh, art, creativity in progress. Absolutely. And so, and so um, if you had, uh, I don't know, I think I like it better that you just left that as part of the art. Absolutely. It is part of the art. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And it's... your extraordinary creativity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm also happy that I left it there. And uh, it's a great um, point to think about in comparison to, to this area here. So this is where everything actually worked for the first time um, and, and held and didn't, didn't crumble. So uh, from, from this point, everything, everything grew. Uh, and and I use I use this word very very consciously uh, because it it follows uh, the writings of Philano Pavel Philano who wrote about painting as as growth uh, led by uh, education and intuition and I was I'm very very taken with that and I think all of these plants coming in coming around are very much in line with that. And would you say it resulting in um, vision? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Vision. You're a visionary. Thank which you. Which I believe artists, musicians, and writers are. Thank um, you. So, up here. Yeah. I love this. I just love this. Everything here. You could spend hours and hours here. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Oh, just. Feeling of the essence of everything that you've created and the experience of what it feels like and what it brings to one's mind and spirit, if I may say so. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And this is, I'm, inter I'm interested in what this means. Sure. How you did this. Well, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I think of, of, of this area as a kind of grounding area, as as one that 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 um, maybe anchors you uh, to this location. Uh, so this this is actually uh, an 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 arrow pointed directly at Mecca. Was the idea? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, you know, it it is also pointing to this to this area of 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 the wall, but. Um, I like the idea of having a cardinal point uh, exist, and uh, and you know, uh, one of the amazing things about fresco is that it has to be done in a sitting, and that's a that's a great limit because you have to you have to paint as the plaster dries, so you only have that one window of time to actually work, and because of that. Uh, it kind of incentivizes almost a quilting, right? Where I'm able to say, okay, I have enough time, you know, to do this one section, one section, one section, one section. So there is a, a patchwork and, and a growth that the material itself wants 
Amen. You might be surprised to know that I lived in Tripoli, Libya for two years, in 65 to 67, and one of the members of the royal family staff went to Mecca oh, and wow. brought me back a necklace from Mecca after his Hajj. And I'm just stunned that I never would have known that that points to Mecca. How beautiful. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's really, really interesting. I would love to see this, this necklace. Oh, I'll run home and get it before you do. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm uh, hoping that, that with the, the blue and, and the, the windows that, uh, there is a kind of lightness to it uh, that that people that are in this space will will feel uh, like like they are among almost fresh air, or, or, or that 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 they are almost flying. Wow! Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Rauf Sonyaev, it has been an honor to welcome you to Solutions Rising and to be able to highlight your extraordinary art with our audience. What a joy. And I also want to thank David Fabiano, the Executive Director of Northern Berkshire Community Television Corporation for all the work he did to help produce this program and the filming. And if each one of us picked up one problem and solved it, Imagine the incredible view we would all have of solutions rising.